This is becoming the biggest threat to commercial banks. If you and I are interacting with cryptocurrencies, you know that teenagers already realize the potential of cryptocurrencies. After all, they interact with cryptocurrencies before they qualify to have a bank account. Now, once they experience how easy it is to have a crypto account, then they go to the banks and find out that it's going to take days, weeks before their paperwork is processed and the banks are closed during the weekend and a transaction will take days. It's easy to see how those teenagers are not really going to buy into the traditional bank account system. They'd rather just go back to whatever they were doing before, which is cryptocurrencies. But now, Visa have come with the same realization. There are greater benefits interacting with cryptocurrencies than it is to remain on commercial banks. Now, when it comes to cryptocurrencies, we have a trilemma, and that trilemma is decentralization, scalability, and security. Now, when it comes to scalability, no other blockchain can surpass Solana. Solana can process 65,000 transactions per second, just like Visa. So it's not strange to see that Visa and Solana are partnering together with USB-C. Now, we need to remember that Visa is a payment system that processes over 24,000 transactions per second every day globally. Visa has no borders, neither does Solana. Now, it's not just a partnership between Solana and Visa. It's a partnership between Solana, Visa, and Circle. Now, Circle is the issuer of the stablecoin USDC. Now, another way to look at the USDC is a US dollar without borders. So think about it. Visa has no borders. Solana has no borders, and now they have a US dollar without any borders on a blockchain that can process 100,000 transactions per second, which is very suitable to Visa. That, to me, is a new landmark on the history of cryptocurrencies. Now, also because Solana can process thousands of transactions per second, guess what? Those transactions are also cheaper. So this integration between USDC, Solana, and Visa definitely it's going to help Visa tremendously. After all, Visa is stuck with a US dollar on the traditional system. So in order to understand why Visa is partnering with Solana USDC, I want to explain to you how Airbnb works. Airbnb has a very unique monetary situation because when a client finds a place on Airbnb, that person, that client, books the room with Airbnb. Now what happens is Airbnb charges that person instantaneously. So let's say that person book a place a month later. Airbnb receives that money and work with that money for about 30 days. Now, 30 days later, when that person arrives at the destination, what happens is 24 hours after the person arrive at the place and check in, Airbnb send that money to the merchant. Here you can see how Airbnb is always having a snowball of money that are on the hands of Airbnb and is not necessarily belonging to Airbnb. However, Airbnb have a buffer. It has a lot of money that can work with. Now, when we look at Visa, Visa actually has the opposite of Airbnb. When a merchant goes out of his country to another country, find a merchandise and he buys, Visa opts from the money instantaneously. Now, what happens is it takes days on a traditional monetary system for that bank to send that money to Visa, meaning Visa is going to operate on the negative. Visa is going to front that money and then wait for the money to come for the traditional banking system. Remember, Visa also has to do conversions because let's say someone from the UK goes to a different location, that money must be exchanged. Now, with the partnership of Visa with Solana and Circle, things are going to be very different. Now, when that merchant is going to go and buy something in another country, Visa is going to receive that money instantaneously from Solana and no longer going to have to be waiting for the turtle is low, expensive, traditional system. So that's the greatest benefit for Visa. Visa is going to be operating with international dollars or borderless borders on a blockchain that's borderless and with a version of the US dollar that's borderless and a version of the US dollar that's very fast and cheap. That's why it takes a lot of fees for Visa. Visa needs to deal with a slow system, a slow traditional system, and now those costs and those benefits are going to be available to Visa. In my view, this partnership opened the door to a lot more potential things to happen. Let's look at this. 40, 50 years ago, most households would have a maximum of five 
to 10 transactions per month. People pay for their utilities, maybe their rent, groceries, maintenance of the car, putting diesel in the car or gas in the car. There will be very few monthly transactions for most households. In today's world, I know people have a television that has more than five payments per month. They subscribe to Netflix, Amazon Prime, Apple TV, and so on. Now, I can see a world where instead of paying for the monthly membership of Netflix, for instance, we're going to pay for the seconds that you watch of whatever movie. The same thing for Spotify. Imagine just paying for the seconds that you listen to a music. And I think that is the future of payment systems, where you only pay for what we consume. Another thing that I think is going to happen in the future, this partnership can also potentially change the way we do loyalty programs. After all, there's a lot of loyalty programs where you get miles from the airline, you get points for buying this place. Now imagine instantaneously having those bonus credit to you on a fiat value, on a cryptocurrency value. I think this partnership will also open the potential of that. Now, what does this move of Visa mean? It means that Visa has guaranteed its future on the future of finance and payments. After all, let's look at this. The internet changed the way communication works. Can you imagine a radio station not realizing that the internet was going to destroy their future by creation of podcasts? So I see that the same way that podcasts kill the radio, blockchain technology can kill any traditional system that fails to adopt the new technology. Most people today listen to podcasts instead of listening to radio. And I think this is going to also happen in the world of finance. So to me, Visa partnering with Solana and Circle is also a way for Visa to guarantee their future on the future of finance and payments. And I think we're going to have a lot more benefits to come from this partnership. At least those are my thoughts. What are your thoughts? Let me know that on the comments below.